Nobody knows what's going on in these places. The press doesn't really deal with them. Um, we try, but it's really difficult to get a foot in the door because, you know, we ask the state police for information and they say, well, we don't control that, the FBI does. We ask the FBI and they say, well, we don't control that, ask the state police. So it's sort of like a Kafka-esque nightmare situation. Um, the other thing is that the federal government is engaged in a long-term process to flood local governments with money for not education, not health care, surveillance technology. So this, all this money is coming to Massachusetts and to other states and local governments to pay for surveillance cameras. Anybody can, can anybody guess how much money the Boston metro region has gotten from DHS for surveillance cameras over the past 10 years? Just guess. Anybody? Close. $10 million, nearly. $10 million. That's a lot of money. Um, so yeah, basically to blanket Boston and, you know, the surrounding metro area and surveillance cameras that are all networked with video analytics and hooked up to the, to the fusion centers in, in Maynard and in Boston. Um, it's a disaster. Uh, so automatic license plate recognition, the, the license plate thing that I was talking about before. Money for this came from the federal government, from the Department of Transportation, actually, uh, to, the, to the public safety agency here in Massachusetts. $300,000 to buy these machines for uh, for local police throughout the state. Uh, another one is um, SCOM, Secure Communities. Has anybody heard of that? Secure Communities is a program that ICE, uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement out of DHS is pushing. Um, they're trying to say that everybody in the country has to be a part of it. Thank God, Deval Patrick said no. Uh, Mayor Menino has said no. But DHS is saying we don't have a choice. And unfortunately, DHS is working in a highly anti-democratic fashion behind the backs of the governor, behind the backs of the mayor, behind the backs of all citizens who are opposed to this program, because they're giving the technology that enables this, uh, this program to take effect to local police departments. All the police need is these little electronic fingerprinting machines in order to make this a reality. And, they're, and so the federal government is paying for this technology all throughout the country um, so that sheriff's departments and local police can do this with or without the consent of, you know, who rules them, essentially, the governor, the mayor, whatever. Um, and those are just a few examples of, of the ways in which the federal government through DHS is sticking its hands in, in local politics, essentially, in local governance, and really changing a lot behind the backs of most, of most people. Most people don't know this stuff is going on. And of course, most local police departments are, are not going to say no to free money and new toys, right? I mean, so it's happening. Face recognition. The, the Massachusetts Sheriff's Association a couple years ago got a nearly $300,000 grant to buy face recognition and iris scanning mobile technology, mobile, like you can attach it to your iPhone um, for, for, like, I think two police departments in every county and every sheriff's department. So now in Massachusetts, Every sheriff's department has face recognition and IRS scanning technology, thanks to the federal government. That was through the uh, Department of Justice, actually. So, talked about fusion centers, talked about technology, talked about uh, the rules being relaxed. So, what can we do, right? I mean, this is a question I get asked a lot. What can we do? Well, what we can do is things like this, right? Talking about what's going on, not being afraid to talk about what's going on, um, educating people you know about what's going on, and then also taking action in small ways on the local level to fight the rollout of these surveillance technologies. Because, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I can't stop the FBI from doing whatever it's going to do, but we might actually be able to stop the Boston police or the Worcester police or, you know, the Springfield police from using automatic license plate scanners, from using um, facial recognition technology. And if we can do that on the local level throughout the country, we're really going to be able to put a big, um, what is it called, wrench in the operations of, of the Department of Homeland Security's plans for rolling out these surveillance regimes nationwide. So uh, if you're interested, if you're interested in getting involved in these movements locally, I encourage you to come talk to me because it's really exciting, actually. We've got some, we, we wanted Brookline. Uh, Brookline is the first the first place in the country that I know of to actually say no to a federal grant for license plate technology, for license plate readers. And in Cambridge as well, a couple of years ago, they got uh, the city to turn off their Department of Homeland Security cameras that were paid for with the money that I said before. 
Um, Alright, so, you know, there's one more point that I want to make before I open it up for questions, and that's, you know, people always say, why should I care, I'm not doing anything wrong, and a lot of the time, like, I don't know if you guys heard about the Washington Post series that Dana Priest did called Top Secret America, she makes a lot of arguments about the efficacy and the cost of these programs, right? Which is to say, the programs are expensive, and they don't work, right? I agree with that. They are expensive, and they don't work. But that, that argument does not light my fire. And it does <laughs> light my fire because we need to make a moral argument. A moral argument and an ideological argument and an argument about values to people, right? I mean, that's what I think. Now, I'm not paid by the ACLU to say that. I, th I think that though deeply. Because if people are, are, are willing to accept the fact that the government, you know, can get up all in your business, know what you're doing, know who your friends are, uh, know where you were last night, you know, see inside your bedroom windows, etc. What's the point? Why do we even pretend we live in a democracy? That's not a democracy. That's East Germany, you know? Um, so anyway, I just I just wanted to say that because I get frustrated when people make arguments about cost and efficacy because we really need to be talking about democratic values today. And that's why. Um, okay, so lastly, there's information up here. I have bus cards. That's bus get busted by the police, um, you put them in your wallet. And I also have a flyer that has information about a website that I made that has tons of information about surveillance technology, all of this stuff that I've talked about, and a whole lot more. So if you're interested in learning more about this, you should really take a look. Um, and I think, oh wait, I want to do one thing actually before we end. I want to do a people's mic thing so everyone hears it. Okay. So. Basically, the only way that you can prevent yourself from being jacked up by the FBI like Tarek Mahana was, does anybody know what happened to Tarek Mahana? Tarek Mahana spoke to the FBI. That was his greatest mistake. Never speak to the FBI without your lawyer, ever. This is not, this is not romantic advice. This is not radical advice. This is practical advice. Never speak to the FBI without your lawyer present, ever. Don't say anything to them except I'm not speaking to you. If they say, Oh, it's not a big deal. I just want to come in and ask you a few questions. Say no. If they say, how are you? Don't answer. Don't answer any of their questions. Tarek Mahana, he's being charged with making false statements to a federal official. This is a very serious charge. They will twist anything you say and use it against you. Don't speak to them. So, on that note, people's mic. If the FBI comes to speak with you, if the FBI comes to speak to you, tell them this. Tell them this. I have no comments. I have no comments. If you want to speak with me, if you want to speak with me, arrange a meeting. Arrange a meeting with my lawyer. With my lawyer. Goodbye. Goodbye. Again. Again. <laughs> Never. Never. Ever. 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 Speak. Speak. Without your lawyer present. Without your lawyer present.